If you're looking to improve your endpoint security, you're probably considering upgrading from a traditional antivirus to at least an endpoint protection platform. Let's take a look at the five keys that make an endpoint protection platform superior to a traditional antivirus platform. Hi, I'm Steve Murphy. I'm a vice president at ARG, and while I work for ARG, this video is my own and not necessarily a reflection of the views or opinions of my employer. This channel is all about helping IT leaders make great business decisions. And securing the endpoints today is more important than ever. So let's take a look at the five keys for endpoint protection. First of all, we want to understand why you might be considering upgrading from your antivirus today. Traditional antivirus platforms will block known threats. They're functional, but they're really not effective for an enterprise class solution. They're more of a consumer level product. An enterprise class endpoint protection system will have at least these five key ingredients. It will have access to multiple threat intelligence databases. It will encrypt data on the endpoint. It will provide individual personal firewalling. Intrusion detection will also be available and it will include data loss prevention. Now these components elevate traditional antivirus and anti-malware services to an enterprise grade information and user protection platform. I wanna make a quick note here. Let's not confuse Endpoint protection with endpoint detection and response, EDR. Endpoint protection is a separate service from EDR. While EDR platforms do include endpoint protection, not all endpoint protection platforms include EDR. Endpoint protection can be considered a proactive service. It, it proactively scans files on the machine to determine whether or not they might be considered as a known malicious threat. An EDR platform assumes that a threat has already occurred, a breach has already occurred, and works to mitigate and remediate that breach. It's two different approaches, and again, endpoint protection is probably more popular today than EDRs, but most people over time will probably migrate to a more uh, robust EDR platform. But EDR may not be right for your organization today, especially with regard to the price point and overall value proposition. So let's talk about endpoint protection specifically. Endpoint protection platforms should have multiple feeds from threat intelligence databases. Now, having multiple feeds is the best way to ensure that you have the most current information as well as the most thorough profile of all the malicious identifiers out in the wild. This database includes indicators of compromises or typically abbreviated IOCs and other artifacts of malware. Now, endpoint protection platforms are signature-based programs. They constantly scan the activity and files on a machine and determine whether or not the signature of those files match a known malicious signature. And therefore, having multiple feeds increases the chance that they'll see, be able to evaluate the files on that machine against a broader universe of, of known threats. Now, receiving feeds from multiple data, databases does increase your chances of catching zero days because if it shows up in one database on the zero day, but not in another database until maybe three days later when those databases are, uh, are synced and compared, you'll have a much better chance of catching that zero day when it's closer to the, a threat for your environment. But it does create a lot of complexity. Many um, larger organizations try to manage their own threat intelligence databases and ingesting multiple feeds into those in, uh, intelligence databases can create a lot of congestion, a lot of traffic, and a lot of management. Best to have the professionals manage that. And EPP platforms are expert at managing those multiple feeds. Now data encryption. Historically, we haven't encrypted data on endpoints. Um, Individual computers, even laptops, are generally not encrypted, but that's changing rapidly. Endpoint data encryption is critical in today's environment. So the encryption will scramble the data, essentially code it, making it unreadable to anyone who doesn't have the decoding key or, or, or the, the decryption cipher. And encryption even protects the operating system from certain malware. Now, if you are in a regulated industry, such as healthcare, or have a lot of consumer information on your machine, having it encrypted today is very much a requirement. But we recommend encrypting all business information on any mobile device as a best practice. An endpoint firewall is really attractive in today's day and age when many people are using their machines outside of the traditional office environment. 
So the endpoint firewall protects the individual device rather than a traditional firewall that would protect a network. It filters traffic and enforces policy that you set and create. So it allows the end user to do things that are within the corporate sanctioned policy but can prevent the end user from using that machine for other, let's say, personal purposes. It can also prevent unsolicited inbound traffic and it adapts to the network situation. So if someone is a traditional home worker and it is using that known IP address from the user's home, it might have one security posture, but if that user moves to an unsecured Wi-Fi network, let's say in a coffee shop, it could introduce a stricter security posture to protect that user in that unknown environment. Now intrusion detection historically has been a component of firewall services, but today intrusion detection is really its own standalone category. And it does continue to work in conjunction with the firewall. Usually the IPS or intrusion protection service will see the traffic, the outbound traffic before it hits the firewall. So it can apply analytics to that traffic. It screens for unusual traffic flows. So um, traffic going out at three o'clock in the morning, for example, or traffic going out when uh, the user isn't actually using the, the laptop. Uh, it can identify requests to known malicious domains and blocks suspicious traffic to those domains. And it can also create, all these functions can actually create alarms for your security operations team or your security operations center, or your SOC, in order for them to investigate further. Lastly, we have data loss prevention. Now data loss prevention, or DLP, limits or locks down the ability to move data on a device. It's a separate function that requires additional authorization if someone tries to do something with a large amount of data. It prevents, records, or encrypts USB activity, for example. So you don't want someone plugging in a flash drive to a laptop and downloading a customer list. It will either throw an alarm, record that activity, or potentially encrypt that USB activity so it can't be used on a non-corporate owned machine. It will monitor and control file transfer. So it will prevent, for example, users from uploading information in a, into their personal box accounts. And it will restrict saving data locally. If you don't want people to carry around a lot of data on their devices, you can restrict the amount of data that they can or the types of data that they can save on their devices, thereby eliminating the threat should that device become compromised. When data is on the machine, it can classify and uh, assign different restriction levels or different protection levels to specific types of data. So if you have customer data, for example, or intellectual property on the machine, you can assign different levels of protection for those various elements. So in summary, if you're still using a traditional antivirus, anti-malware service for your endpoint security, it's really time to consider an upgrade to an EPP. You have to understand your use cases and always assume the most extreme worst case in your use cases to see if your EPP will have the breadth and scope to address those extreme worst cases. Ask yourself the question, what would you need to protect the organization's data, its reputation, any client confidential information that your users may be using on their endpoints, and what regulatory frameworks do you have to comply with? And if you are looking for an EPP solution, feel free to reach out. My contact information is in the description of this video and I'm happy to continue the conversation. My firm represents a number of EPP solutions, so I'm happy to have a conversation with you at any time. If you got some value out of this video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up, a like, and thank you very much for doing that. And if you want to return to this channel at your convenience, the best way of doing that is by hitting that subscribe button. That will put my videos in your feed so you can return here at any time. Thanks very much for watching, and I hope you have a great day.